I'd like to say shalom, giving all praise to Yahweh Hashem Yahushat. Also give a double honor to the elders of GMS, and also give a double honor to the Akim. And peace and blessings to the brothers and sisters that listen. Get straight into it, man. You know we all know the news. So-called Bishop Eddie Long is dead. Okay, and that's all the judgment from the Most High. Okay, we've been making videos on this dude when he started deteriorating last year. And we said that he was sick, and we said that the Most High was judging him for his evil works. Okay, he's supposed to be a bishop, a leader, a shepherd of the people. And he was molesting little boys and being a homosexual, man, and teaching lies and deceiving the flock. And the Heavenly Father told you what? Through his son, Yahweh Shai, whom you inly call Jesus Christ. Every tree my father did not plant is going to get hewn down. Okay, and we told you 2017 was going to be a major year in prophecy. A lot of death going to be this year, man. It's going to be a lot of civil unrest, a lot of racial tension, Trump going in office. So a lot of things is going to happen, man. These are all the signs of the times. And you other false prophets and teachers out there, you're next. Okay, the Creflo Dollars and the TD Jakes, you guys that's been robbing the people, you know what I mean, making merchandise out of them. The most high is going to get you, man. All right. No evil deed is going to go unpunished. OK. And people say, oh, how can you judge? That means you don't read the Bible. OK. This whole Bible deals with judgment. Yeah, the Heavenly Father is a man of love, a man of peace, a man of mercy. But the Bible tells you there's a time and season for everything under heaven. OK. And we're in the time of this society being plucked down. Judgment, great death. Because that's exactly what you English call Jesus Christ. That's exactly what he's going to do when he comes back. So I'm gonna, without further ado, I'm going to get straight into the precepts. Okay, because that dude was evil, man. That dude was evil, man. He that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong of his doing. And, and he was what? He was a straight up homosexual, man. And what does the scripture say about that? A homosexual and a wicked, evil pedophile, man. I'm going to read the scriptures on this dude, man. Jude chapter 1, verse 7. Okay, let's see what the Bible says. First precept, it says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. What's fornication? Fornication is a Greek word, poneia, which means sexual immorality or sexual wickedness, such as what? Adultery, homosexuality bestiality, incest, lasciviousness, okay, pedophilia, all right, and that's what Eddie Long was guilty of, he thought when he paid them 15 million dollars off, them four boys, he really thought he was exempt from judgment, and he's supposed to be a man of God, don't you know the Heavenly Father sees everything, man, the scripture says the eyes of the Most High is in every place, beholding the good and the evil, and the scripture says, even though he's slow to anger, he does not acquit the wicked. So the Heavenly Father judge you, man. The American legal system couldn't judge you because it's a wicked system anyway. But the Most High is just and he got you. All right. So it says what? Jude 1, 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication or sexual wickedness and going after strange flesh are set forth an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire that's what the heavenly father did to them he destroyed that city blew it out of existence and that's going to happen to america aka babylon the third world's war because america promotes that okay america promotes these things and now you got these so-called preachers promoting these things man and that's why the most high bringing judgment upon y'all and you have these uh, silly Negroes in these churches and these people sticking up for men like that. That shows that what? They don't believe in God. They don't believe in the Most High. They don't believe in His Word. Because if you did believe in His Word and you were spiritual, you will understand that that was judgment. Okay? And the Bible is a precept for that. Okay? The scripture calls that what? I'm going to read it right now. Proverbs 17 15. It says, he that justifieth the wicked. So when you stick up for Eddie Long, you stick up for the pedophile Pope, you stick up for these uh, uh, 
<laughs> these other false prophets and teachers or anybody that's doing evil, period. Anything that's against the word of the Heavenly Father. The Bible says what? He that justifieth the wicked and he that condemneth the just. They, could, they try to condemn us because they saw we're being judgmental. The Bible says he that is spiritual judgeth all things. We can judge anybody according to the book. If you were a thief, we can judge you on that, man. If you're stealing, then you're a thief. Point blank pay. If you are, if you you're out there killing people, then you're a murderer, man. If a woman is a, whore, a harlot or a whore, then she's what? She's an adulterer. Unless those people repent. All right. So the Bible says what? And he that condemneth the just. So they like to come up against what we're saying. Oh, you guys shouldn't say that. Or that's wrong. You're condemning the just. But at the same time, you're justifying the wicked. So I'm gonna read the precept again. He that justifies the wicked. And he that condemneth the just, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. So when you stick up for wicked men, or you show respect to a person's, oh, because that's your so-called pastor or bishop. So I guess he's allowed to do those things. The Bible says what? An abomination to the Most High and his son. Okay. You're supposed to what? Hate the evil and love the good, according to the Bible, man. And the, the scripture, and there was a there was a controversy when you read the book of Corinthians on certain wicked people that was in the church. And the apostle Paul wrote to the church of Corinth what was supposed to happen to individuals that did these things. And I'm gonna read a precept, okay? Because we realize that the Christian world don't believe in the Bible, man. Everything they do is contrary to the book, right? They go up based on their own opinion and they roll on the floor jump up and down and they give all their money to these wicked preachers man and you don't learn nothing all right first corinthians chapter five do it a controversy it says um this is what paul's saying to the church of corinth we just read about fornication or sexual immorality and this is exactly what eddie long was guilty of it said it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you or sexual wickedness as such fornication, that is not so much named among the Gentiles or the heathen. This is Paul writing to the church of Corinth, that one should have his father's wife. So there was a guy in the congregation that was sleeping with his father's wife or his stepmother. And let's see what the, what Paul said. And he had puffed up and have not rather mourned that he had done this deed might be taken away from among you. So Paul said, yo, this guy's supposed to be extradited out of the church, man. Like he's not supposed to be amongst your congregation. <laughs> no, I'm gonna read on. <clears throat> so lock it. All right, let me read that precept again. I lost the precept. It says, um, "Have done um, might be taken from among you, for verily, as absent in body but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present." So what did Paul say? Let me read that again. For I verily or truly. As absent in the body. So Paul said, I'm not physically there, but what? But present in spirit. I'm with you guys spiritually. Have judged already. So hold on. The apostle Paul passed judgment. Paul said, I may not be there physically, but in spirit I'm there. And I already judged the situation already. That's what I'm writing to you guys. As do I were present concerning him that have done so this deed. And in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is real name Yahweh Shine Hebrew. When he gathers together my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, this is what Paul said you're supposed to do to wicked people in your congregation. To deliver such as one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, for that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, man. So Paul said that what? You're supposed to deliver a man like that unto Satan. He's not supposed to be in your congregation, man. I'm going to jump down to the point. Um... Verse seven, purge out therefore the old leaven that that ye might be a new lump as ye are unleavened. So anybody that's a cancer within the body or the congregation, you're supposed to purge them out. Cast him out, man. OK, because he just did a what a sin unto death. People say, oh, you could pray for you can't pray for a man like that, man. Because of the type of sin that he committed. That's why I'm going to read this scripture right here. What John said. 
first John chapter one. Uh let me see Prime's precept quick. It's first John. Chapter 1, verse 16. First John, chapter 5, verse 16, I believe. It says, this is what the Bible says. If any man see his brother sin, was sin transgression of the law. You still have to keep the commandments to the best of your ability. That's another thing that you earn in these scriptures, with these people in these churches. All right? It says, if any man see his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death. So if there's a brother in your congregation that commit a sin or break the law that's not unto death, you know, he may lie on somebody or, you know, he may end up stealing money. You know, that's not a sin unto death. The Bible says what? He shall ask and he shall give him life. That's that's sin. Let me read again. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. So if you see him sin a sin unto death, not that's not unto death, and he asks for forgiveness and he does the right thing, you're supposed to forgive that man. But the Bible said there is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. So if you see him commit a sin unto death, you can't pray for that man. What's a sin unto death? Adultery is a sin unto death. If you so-called repent and you call yourself doing a man of the most high, doing the right thing. And you commit adultery like Paul had, like we just read in 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. A man had what? Sex with his father's wife. That's adultery. That's a sin unto death. And he supposedly already repented by coming into the truth born again. So he still was doing those things. So Paul said, what? You're supposed to cast that man to Satan. Eddie Long was what? A homosexual, man. A body boy, man. All right? A pedophile. That's a sin unto death. He was supposed to be cast out a long time ago. But guess what? The most I cast him out by putting his ass to death, man. The scripture said there shall be no evil among you. And more you so-called false preachers and you false pastors and you wicked Israelite teachers out there that's doing teaching false doctrine, man, and deceiving the people. You all gonna share the same fate. So we all got what we all gotta examine ourselves, man. Alright? All of us have to what? Make sure we walk into that straight and narrow path. Because he's an example of what not to do. All right. Read another scripture. Um, Hebrews. Chapter 10, verse 26. This is what Paul said. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth. So if you break in the, the Heavenly Father's laws after you receive the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no sacrifice for sins. So there was no sacrifice that he could give for the type of sins that he was committing because he supposedly have received the knowledge of the truth already. You supposedly cleaned yourself up and you're sinning willfully by being a homosexual and a pedophile. And you got a lot of these homosexuals that's still in the churches, man. That's a part of the choir. <laughs> that's amongst the congregation. You got all kind of evil going on in these churches, man. All right. That means the fear of the Lord is not in you, man. Okay. The fear of the Most High. The Bible says that's the beginning of knowledge. All right. You have to keep the commandments, man. The scripture says, should we then void the law through faith? God forbid. Yeah, we what? Yeah, we established the law. The Bible said faith without works is what? Is dead. The two goes hand in hand. They're two sides of the same coin. And that's why you got all that iniquity going on in these so-called black churches. But the Heavenly Father is judging y'all, man. He's starting at his sanctuary. Okay, amongst you wicked Israelites. And you got a lot of people upset. I see this comment was a lot of people upset. Now we're mocking this guy. And we're going to continue to mock you guys that get judged, man. Because why? Did not Elijah mock the prophets of Baal when they got judged? And the prophets of Baal were what? False prophets. 
And we living in the time, man, where a lot of you see, we coming to the end of this thing. So we're going to see a lot more death. So, brothers and sisters, man, we got to make sure that we're right, man. And we keep doing the right thing, keep striving to the latter end. I'm going to read this precept. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. So it was a showdown between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And let's see what happened. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I, only remain a prophet of the Lord. So he was by himself. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put it no fire under and I will dress the other bullock and lay it on the wood and put no fire under. And he called thee on the name of your gods and I will call in the name of the Lord. And the God that answered by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. So Elijah, there was a showdown between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Let's put our sacrifices on the wood. Let's call upon our guy of power. And whoever one lights it, that's who we, the people got to follow. And Elijah was by himself against 450 men. See, and, but if the Lord is with you, one man could take down a thousand, man. But you have to come in the name of the Lord, which they don't teach that in the churches, man. The name of the Most High is Yahweh, and his son name is Yahweh Shine the Hebrew. Okay? That's coming back to your heritage. You got to tap back into the language. But I'm going to read on verse 25. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first. For ye are many, and call in the name of your gods and put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal. From morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice nor any answered. And then they leapt upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. So Elijah started mocking them, man, because they were false prophets and teachers and said, cry aloud for he is a God. Either he's talking or he's pursuing or he's in a journey or he's preventure. He sleepeth and must be awakened. So Elijah said, but maybe he's talking. Maybe he's on a journey or maybe he's sleeping up there. I don't know. What's, why he can't answer your prayer? Verse 28. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after this manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. So I'm going to jump to the point. And Elijah said unto all the people, come there unto me. And the people came unto him and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. So after they finished their madness and nothing happened. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the 12 tribes of the sons of Jacob. And that's who the Most High is dealing with. The 12 lost tribes of the children of Israel, which are you so-called Negroes, you Hispanics, and you Native Americans. You are the Israelites. You are the Heavenly Father's chosen people. And we came on this side of the world to serve our slavery in America and came Babylon for breaking the Heavenly Father's commandments. But now we have a chance to repent. And do the right thing so we can receive salvation. But any one of you that don't want to repent, you're going to be purged with fire. You're going to end up just like Eddie Long, man. And we're going to read what happened to the judgment for being a false prophet. Unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain 2,000 measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, fill four barrels of water and pour it onto the burnt sacrifice and into the wood. So he's getting the sacrifice ready. And he said, do it the second time. And he did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And he did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering, the evening sacrifice that Elijah, the prophet came there and said, Lord, power of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, that it be known this day that thou art the power in Israel, and that I am thy servant, that I have done all these things at thy word. Everything we do, man, is based on, is thus saith the Lord, is based on these scriptures, not our opinion. Let's read on. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord power, and that has turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. 
When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord is he, the God. The Lord, he is the God, man. The Lord is Yahweh, man. And his son is Yahweh Shai. So they knew Elijah was a man of the Lord. And let's see what happened to the false prophets of Baal. And Elijah said unto them, take the prophets of Baal, let none of them escape. And they took them and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. All 450 false prophets of Baal got put to death. And that is the judgment from the Most High. That is the judgment for being a false prophet and a false teacher. Death. So this is like the elder said, this is the year of death, diligence, and destruction. Man. And we're going to see many other things happen this year. A lot of you guys that's been running amok, playing games with this word, you wolves in sheep clothing, this is your year, man. This is the time the Most High is going to deal with y'all, man. That's why the scripture says this, Psalms 58 and 3, and we're going to rejoice in that day because you guys are in the way. All right? Psalms 58 and 3, it says... Um, is it 58 and 3? Let me read this last preset. Psalms 58 and 10. And this is what we're going to do in that time. Okay, it says, The righteous shall rejoice. So you're supposed to rejoice. When he seeth the vengeance, he shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked man. So that a man shall say, Verily there is a reward for the righteous. Verily is he a God that judgeth in the earth. So what the righteous going to do when he see the vengeance, when he see the wicked being judged? He's going to wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, man. And that's exactly what the Messiah going to do when he come back. When he judge this planet earth. All right? And Lord willing, we are part of the elect. So that I'm going to say, giving all praise, how about Shimei al Shah? And like I said, you Israelites out there, you Negroes and Hispanics and you Native Indians, man, you better get your act together, man, and get out of these wicked churches and come back to you all, who you are. Because if you don't, you're going to be judged, man. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.